there's one thing I've learned in life, it's that everybody has bills. Let's face facts here. This hobby costs a lot of money, and sometimes we gotta budget. You know what? I like playing budget decks. Restriction breeds creativity. That's why we like Commander. Probably why most of us like magic, you know? We have this restrictive rule set that lets us express ourselves creatively. People bang on Commander as being for casuals, you know? They say these non-competitive dinguses are out there, they just want to have fun, what a bunch of losers. But the restrictions are what makes the deck building interesting, and I can't get enough of it. I build decks for fun, just to see them work, just to see what they can do. It's even more rewarding when you build a deck that can slap the table around for 50 bucks or something. Yeah man, for me, anything under $100 is budget. But you know, you can go 50 bucks, 25 bucks, those are all doable. So what are some commanders you can build on a budget? Well, don't worry, old Nicky G's here to pontificate for a few minutes for all you silly geese. Let's start with a $2 card, Miriam Sentinel Worm. Three, green, blue, and a red for a legendary creature, Dragon Spirit. It's a 6-6 six, six with flying in Ward 2. Whenever another non-token dragon enters the battlefield under your control, create a token that's a copy of it, except the token isn't legendary. See, you're in fantastic colors for ramp and colors with a ton of interaction. People see Miriam out there and they're going to want to kill it because people are horrible, dude. That Ward 2 will protect it early, though 6 mana cost means you're going to be running quite a bit of ramp. Now who says dragons need to be expensive? My Miriam deck just asks that the dragons ETB under your control. So that means blink effects, dude, which you have lots of in blue. Turn 6, this deck reliably has 30 power in the air ready to swing. The value's insane. I have a $50 deck that rips, just ask my mother about it. You don't need combat damage to win, you have some direct damage effects like Wrathful Red Dragon. You know, and of course, Dragon Tempest. Fun little deck here that's a real threat. All right, brother, let's go all the way back to 2020. It was a strange time. See, there was this little pandy out there. We call it the Pandy Wandy that took the world by storm. 2020 is better remembered for Ikoria, Lair of Behemoths. Enter the Lair of Nethroi, Apex of Death. Two white, black, and a green for a legendary creature, Cat Nightmare Beast. It's a 5 5 with Mutate for four and a hybrid green, white, and two black. If you cast a spell for its mutate cost, put it over or under target non-human creature you control. They mutate into the creature on top, plus all abilities from under it. Has death touch and lifelink. Whenever this guy mutates, return any number of target creature cards with total power 10 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. This card is a pretty awesome self-mill Abzan deck that can capitalize on a number of weird interactions. If you reanimate a bunch of zero power creatures like Hydras and they don't come in with counters, they die immediately. Reanimate a bunch of aristocrats, you know, blood artists, Zulaport, cutthroat, stuff like that, you can win on the spot, man. I'm just saying, that's a deck you could build with this. But you have to kind of earn it. Feels good when you win that way. I just think it's a neat card. It's got that mutate flavor. Or you could just build an Abzan reanimator deck. Reanimate cards that enter with counters like Penavis or Newscraft Mob. In any case, this card is 29 cents, man, or $2 for the fancy schmancy version. Magnus the Red. I know some people don't like 40k cards and their Magic the Gathering cards, but man, listen, I don't know, this guy fits in perfectly with the Magic Universe. He's just a demon with some horns on his chest. It's three blue and a red for a legendary creature. He's a demon Primarch. It's four or five with flying. This guy's got unearthly power, just like your host, Nikki G. Instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast for each creature token you control. As the Blade of Magnus, whenever this guy deals combat damage to a player, create a 3-3 red spawn creature token. Listen man, I'm telling you, this is a bonkers polymorph commander. There are so many effects that create tokens, little instants and sorceries, as well as some scalable X spells. I have a list, and it's silly how crazy things can get. My version is $117, but has a Jeska's Will in it. Get rid of that and it's under 100 bucks. You could easily do it for 50. Magnus makes a token on damage, so you'll have the polymorph fodder right there. I run four creatures. It's actually where another bunch of money could be saved. They're all $5 or so. The power of this commander is insane. It's pretty broad too. A ton of hyper expensive instants and sorceries are pennies, dude. So you can just go that route as well. I slotted in some more mana intensive counters like access denied. Crazy, if you're sleeping on this guy, man, I pity you, fool. Ramsey's Assassin Lord. Two blue and a black for a legendary creature, human assassin. It's a 4 4 with death touch. Other assassins you control get plus one, plus one, but that ability is a trap, my friend. Whenever a player loses the game, if they were attacked this turn by an assassin you controlled, you win the game. And this guy's an assassin. That's it. That's all you need. Okay, hear me out on this one. Everybody else is playing Commander, right? But you're playing a different game. You're playing Kill the Weakest Player with Commander damage. The other Assassin's thing is just a trap. You go hard on one player to see if the table can stop you. It's risky business, dude. If they don't have removal, 
you're done. You leverage phasing with cards like Teferi's Veil and Hexproof with cheap, cheap equipment, pump your commander, protect him, get in there to slash one player's throat. This guy's the only assassin you'll ever need. Hey, guess what, buddy? Why not toss a Phyresis in there? Put the pressure on. I built a $50 deck, and let me tell you, man, it slaps, dude. Give it a try if you want. It's so flavorful, bopping in and then phasing out at the end of combat. And last, but certainly not least, Alila Artful Provocateur. One white, blue, and a black for a legendary creature, Fairy Warlock. It's a 2-3. This thing's real cheap right now because it got a bunch of reprints. Flying, Death Touch, Lifelink. Other creatures with flying, you control with flying, get plus one, plus O. Oh. Whenever you cast an artifact or enchantment spell, create a 1-1 blue fairy creature token with flying. Alila has pretty bonkers value. This hot little fairy has been reprinted a bunch, leans right into artifacts and enchantments. And I know what you're thinking, the best archetype out there, vehicles. Everybody wants a vehicle deck because let's face it, it's the best. Alila makes these little fairies a little bigger so you can crew vehicles a little better. Honestly, you can just pack anthems and ways to protect Alila and have a swarm of big flyers, which is also a fun way to win a game. Oh, whoa, hang on, dude. One more bonus commander for your perusal. I built a $40 deck for this hot lady, also a fairy, Ivy Gleeful Spell Thief. So this is a green and a blue for a legendary creature fairy rogue. It has flying. Whenever a player casts a spell that targets only a single creature other than Ivy Gleeful Spell Thief, you may copy that spell. The copy targets Ivy. This deck is filled with little cantrip spells, value creatures, and auras. What ends up happening is you plop out Ivy and a creature like Cold-Eyed Selkie or Satessan Champion. You basically have Ivy in the air and your little combat threat out there and you just go to town. Last game I played, I ended up winning with commander damage as Ivy had gotten pretty huge by endgame. Very fun deck that also leverages Mutate, but it's mostly aura focused. Now how many decks can say that? Surprisingly resilient too due to the massive card draw that gets doubled on those little cantrips. There are also a few surprises like Corrupted Conscience to give an evasive Ivy infect. You don't have to target a creature your opponents control with that card, but you can. Plus you get to play fun mutate cards like the auspicious Starix. Try saying that three times fast. It's four and a green for a creature elk beast. It's a six six with mutate for five and a green. Whenever this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library into you exile X permanent cards, where X is the number of times this creature has mutated, put those permanent cards onto the battlefield. So you throw in a couple mutate guys, you get a couple triggers off of this if you target your other creature because you're going to copy it for Ivy, brother. And that, my friends, is five of my favorite budget commanders with deck lists to go along with them, except for Nathroy. I don't have one for Nathroy, dude. These are battle-tested brews, budget bangers for brotherly beasting on your hometown crew. And if you like this video, just like and subscribe, you little nut. That's the way you join the Brotherhood of Bros. And also the 0.4% ladies that watch my channel according to YouTube analytics. You're all my brothers, even if you're anything you want to be, dude. You get love from Nikki G.